good evening, everyone. Is the sound okay? Yeah, I think so. Well, thank you for being here. It's very exciting to uh, start the third edition of Blurring the Lines with Lisanne, our co-curator this year, and of course, Steve Bison that you all know already, I think. So Steve, come here, because I think this uh, edition in this project, actually, that we started three years ago when, actually, Paul uh, believed in this project, and uh, the project started with Paris College of Art and LCF, London College of Fashion, and we never thought that in three years we actually uh, we're going to create this amazing project uh, and have 17 schools that actually responded to this call. We received, I think, near 65 applications and 17 uh, got selected. Um, so we have some finalists here and you will see um, the winners are exhibited at Photo Fever at Carousel de Louvre on, from Thursday evening. So. You will see also the catalog. This is the first time we have this beautiful catalog. Thank you, Steve, and a lot of partners that actually made this possible. And a special thank you to Tara Bogart over there, and Jackie also, that actually made this exhibition and all the project and, and possible. And of course, with the curators. So if you want to say something about the, the exhibition, I just... Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will just say something very quickly. Um, it's becoming a challenge now, eh? every year more because we are receiving, uh, as this year, many works and it's becoming very difficult to select. And, and fitting the time schedule as well is very tight, so it's kind of a challenge. But it's very, very honest, it's very, very exciting to do such a project that network, you know, fresh ideas, you know, new professionals, new talents, new artists. And so being here and doing this, I think, is such a exciting work, so uh, it's a, like a privilege to be there. This year we managed also to raise funds for producing a catalog, which is a way to leave a trace so and give books to all the participants. So, I mean, very, very exciting. And we are happy to have also, again, a show upstairs. Jean has done most of the work this time. <laughs> I, we, we, split, done, I, uh, we split the work. The book, yeah, <laughs> we split the work. And it's nice that these things is happening in a school. I think it's also, yeah. there are a lot of things happening in Paris the next days, but it's, it's very nice that we are gathering here together in a school, because this is very important. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you everybody, thanks Jackie, thanks Tara, and thanks Klaus. And, and then you just remind that there is a place behind. Yeah, you, you will do that. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say that. Um, there is a piece behind this wall, uh, so you can look at, look at it from the outside, so when you go home, just walk around the building and take a look at the work of Chaim, who's also here. Welcome. Uh, so don't forget about that. Um, and I would uh, also suggest to the people, because we have beautiful books made by Steve and Urbanautica, um, and I'm really happy to have these books because the exhibition is one, but I think it's very important to have the publication uh, there to make sure that all the projects of these graduates make it further than uh, the art in crowd. So therefore, uh, everyone who received a book, uh, think about if you need the book and if you want to lend the book to someone else who might also need to see these uh, projects. So that is my uh, suggestion and question to uh, all of you who have received uh, the book. I will also think about who I will give, no, I already know who I'm gonna give my um, book to. Um, and um, uh, she will be in Paris tomorrow, uh, the editor of Vrij Nederland. It's a Dutch magazine, and I think she should really see these projects. And I hope after she's seen the book, she will already, uh, she will also give the, the book to someone else. Um, uh, yes, okay, I think this is uh, it. I think this is uh, the starting point uh, for me uh, to hopefully give you a pleasant evening. Um, I'm a little bit um, nervous, uh, but uh, that's also why I will start with a bit of an unusual part uh, with this presentation. First of all, I will tell you a little bit about me, why I'm here, and why I am doing a presentation on social photography. Um, um, my mother is also here, uh, and that is partially the reason uh, why I'm so interested in social photography, because I come from a very small village, uh, 1,700 people in the Netherlands, um, and I was very uh, comfortable in this village. 
Uh, I had a lot of friends. I went to school there. There was only one school. And then when I had to go to another school, we went with the entire village to this other school. And um, it was very comfortable for me. And then, uh, but suddenly I thought there is more uh, in this world. So I decided to go to the big city, which was only 20 kilometers uh, further. Uh, studied uh, social work for two years. Um, but then also thought I would like to do something within the arts. Uh, then I went to the art academy, um, was a student, um, had a room there, and then suddenly in this art academy people started asking me questions about who are you, what do you want, what do you need, what, what can we do for you, and all these uh, questions uh, were very difficult for me because it was all about who I was, what was my identity as a person. And I had no idea, because I was from this village, I was part from a huge family there. Uh, I did not really have my own identity, I thought. Uh, I was just part of this big family, and that was who I was. Uh, so this journey of trying to find out who I was within this city, I was not this farmer girl um, anymore in the city, and in the city, um, when I was in the village, I was a like a city girl, and was, when I was in the city, I was this farmer's girl, and I didn't know who I was anymore, and that raised a lot of questions, and this um, <coughs> made me think about the social questions uh, more in life. Um, and that's also why I decided within this art academy, studying photography, to um, do a little bit more with the social issues, uh, because I had this personal drive to have all these questions, and try to visualize all these questions. Um, that comes to a point when um, I also decided not to be a photographer myself, but to, to curate and to facilitate uh, projects. So that is also why I'm very happy to be here, have this exhibition, and make sure that these young photographers uh, and artists uh, are being um, pushed into the world and let their work be seen. Um, so that is what I do and that is what I find important to do. Um, I do this with, with the Photodoc most of the time, an organization in the Netherlands who make exhibitions and programs um, all within the social uh, and important themes that are going on in society. Uh, and at this moment I'm also studying sociology at the University in Utrecht to have more thematically in-depth in this theme and to enrich myself with everything that is going on in the world and hopefully visualize this within the arts. That's a little bit about me, uh, but I uh, would really like for you to grab your phones uh, because I would also love to know a little bit more about you. So that's what we're going to start with. So grab your phones for the ones who have them. Okay, you're gonna log in to www.menti.com and then uh, use the code. Yay, there are already players joining us. This is the first time I'm doing this, so I don't know if this is uh, a good idea or a bad idea, but we'll see. <coughs> We're in this together. Okay, so... Yeah, still people joining us. It's getting a bit crowded. I don't know if there's a maximum of people who can join, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, I think this is, uh, this is it. Okay, we're going to do it with the people who are now here. So we're going to start with the first question. Uh, do you consider yourself to be a social photographer? And then you have a few options on your phone. There is no right or wrong answer, of course. Um, you can just choose one of five, and then we can... 
have a look uh, on what this audience is about, who is actually in front of me. Okay, okay. Ooh, it's nice. Okay. This, uh, no, not that. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, okay, so there are 18 of you who really uh, define yourself to be a social photographer. Um, there are also a few people who are not photographers. Um, and there are also 12 of you who are not social photographers and are also not trying to be one. I am very curious who those people are and why they are here. So uh, people who are not social photographers and also not are trying to be one, raise your hands. Okay, yes? Okay. <laughs> Can you, this is a trick question. <laughs> can, you tell me a bit, uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, why you... I'll do not, I feel super trapped now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess I need to know what your definition of social photographer is, but not necessarily as far as interacting with others. I work more with it. Okay, so, you, so you're not a team player? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no? <laughs> no? It's like the worst interview ever. Um, <laughs> okay, well that's fine. Is it is it something you you choose to do? Is it something you are consciously also trying not to not to do because you have something against it or you have some problems with the? I think it just is. It has more to do with like my like how comfortable I am. So I mean, like I'm not comfortable with being a team player. Like yes, when people need my help, I do want to be helpful and stuff like that. But Okay, that's that's fair. That's good. Okay, good answer. Yeah, <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> um, and uh, there are three people who are not social photographers but want to be one. Can one of the three, or all three, raise your hands? No, everyone like push the wrong button or no? No, no one. <laughs> now let's go further then. Um, okay. Oh, there is no winner, but I think I do have to press this button. Oh, you're all winners. Okay, cool. Oh, you get also get a lot of points. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay. Okay. You have a hundred points in total. Uh, so, what is important to you? Uh, one, the artistic freedom of the artist. Two, uh, the use of your work for society. Uh, three, the relationship between the photographer and the subject. And four, reaching a diverse and broad audience. Interesting. All the social people are like uh, standing up for themselves, I can see. Okay, so I think this will, 50 people have already uh, told how they feel. So I think it's interesting, well, maybe not surprised, but it, it is quite interesting that the artistic freedom of the artist is number one for most of you um, and gets, the mo gets most of the percentages. Um, and the other three are quite similar. So... I think it's interesting that you all choose the artistic freedom of the artist above all the social components. Uh, does someone want to add 
or tell me a little bit more about why you think the artistic freedom is so important and why all the social aspects are second. Third. Steve? Uh, third, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Someone? But how can it be yeah. so, Oh, I was going to say because it, all the other ones relate back to the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, if you're going into the bar graph, the other ones go down or go up based on. Yeah. So okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. I understand. So you believe that if the work is useful for society, then obviously the artistic freedom is also in like in place or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay the artist is more free to do yeah. issues perhaps yeah. other people that are really like uh, yeah in relationship with that artist also have more freedom yeah okay interesting yeah someone yeah Jackie. <laughs> I was kind of, kind of seeing it as, um, based on the amount of freedom the artists felt that they had, their work would be more, um, would be better for society. Mm -hmm. Because if they felt limited in that, it might also not be as impactful if they were doing something they felt stifled in. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so when it, what I think it comes down to is that we all have to make work that comes from ourselves, and if that is working, then we can start thinking about others. Maybe that also is not just uh, a question or a thing as a photographer, but also for ourselves as human beings that we have to take care of ourselves and then uh, look at others. Maybe, just a question or... Um, okay. The next question, we have four questions. So this is the third one. Um, which photographer is the most socially engaged? So we have uh, on the left side Jimmy Nelson, uh, then we have Dan Lixenberg, <laughs> we have Ai Weiwei and uh, UNICEF, which is not a photographer, but who work with a lot of photographers. Okay, interesting. I Wei Wei is winning. Uh, <laughs> um, does someone want to tell something? Because I think this is the question that raises the most discussion. At least it did with myself, me and myself. I had a lot of discussions about this question. Uh, about this question. So does any one of you want to reply on this question or the answer you gave? Yes? It depends on your definition of social engagement. Mm -hmm. It's like we live in a world where social engagement now like Mm -hmm. But so it depends what the word engaged really means. Does it mean are you most personally engaged with the work? Or does it mean that you're reaching the most people? Because then I think quite clearly the answer would be UNICEF because it's this huge global kind of uh, uh, campaign and brands and such. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really hard to box it with that phrase when yeah. you're socially engaged. It's okay, so yeah, I understand. No, the, the thoughts that were in my mind are like similar to yours. The only thing that also was in my mind is that UNICEF is an organization that is also uh, often um, visualizing uh, problems in society uh, in a way which is not benefiting the people that are in the pictures themselves. So I think that is interesting. Doesn't say anything about are they most socially engaged or not to me, but that is just something that popped into my mind. Uh, then we have the Ai Weiwei who reacted on this image of Ailan uh, that was on the, the refugee child uh, on the beach. Um, and he had a lot of comments about this image um, because he, he said, well, it's not just one child, this is going on not just in this particular spot, in this particular moment of time, but it's going on everywhere around the world in, every, uh, in several different time aspects. 
so that's also why I think it's interesting that he thought it was necessary to also point out that it's not about this single child where everyone gets excited about and furious about, but it's about more than that. Um, then we have Dana Lixemere. I, I just realized that maybe some of you, like UNICEF is well known, Ayla Wai is well known, Jim and Nelson I think so too, but maybe Dana Lixemere is a little bit less known because she's Dutch. Uh, I'm not sure. How, how many of you do know uh, Dana Lixemere? Okay, yeah, so, so that also has maybe something to do with her being not this high. Um, what, I found, what I found really interesting with the work of Dana is that she um, photographs the subjects for a very long period of time, so sometimes even 10 years in a row. So when you're talking about engagement with the subject in this case, then her engagement is huge because she goes back every time. She doesn't even photograph every time she goes back. Um, but she's very much related to the people and to the way that she is presenting them. Um, and then we have Jimmy Nelson's uh, project. Um, well, at least this last project um, was very discussed about in the media because he photographed um, African tribes in a way that he told it that, like it was the truth. And there were a lot of questions raised about is this really are these really tribes that are, um, how do you say that, um, like fading away? Yeah, yeah, passing away, yeah. Um, and um, so his, his engagement, his social engagement was questioned a lot recently, at least within society, within the, the art, like the art scene, because out of the art scene, I don't think the, those questions are raised as much as within. Um, so there is no, the conclusion is, there is no answer. You, you do have to know a lot about these photographers to <coughs> maybe have an answer. Um, and even then, it's very difficult because the intention, because for me it's also about an intention, what, it is, what is it that you want and what it is that you really are doing and how does that affect the people who you photograph and how does it affect the audience you reach. Uh, so for me it's a very, it's difficult because you never, n you never know. Sometimes a project can be a very, um, um, uh, how do you say that, like it can be very uh, difficult or can have a lot of um, uh, reactions, negative reactions, but the intention was right. Doesn't mean the project is okay, but the intention was there. So then it's, it's always difficult to look into the minds of the photographers and to also um, uh, tell a little bit about what, what the social engagement then actually is. Yeah. Hopefully more about that afterwards, maybe. Okay, uh, last questions. What are key elements of social photography for you? Because we already talked a little bit, like a lot actually, about the terminology. What is uh, social photography? Uh, what does it mean for you? Because I think if we uh, know a little bit what it, about what it means for you, then it's also easier to uh, have a conversation this evening about social photography. Only one? Come on, people. It's a lot of work. Okay, I'm gonna make a photo of this. So I think it's uh, 
an important slide. You can uh, keep filling in uh, everything that comes to your mind. Um, what we already see is that awareness, engagement, impact, society, context, empathy, influence. Influence is actually an interesting one because influence on what? Influence as you, that you, is it the influence you have as an indiv individual on society? Or the influence, influence is my, like the, the association I have with influence is power. It's like um, hierarchy. So uh, I think that one is quite interesting in this social uh, network. Thank you. This also, this gives me quite a, a good idea of what you believe social photography is, or at least what the term terms are that are related to social photography. Um, does anyone want to say something about this? Hi. Uh, he, he raised his hand. I was not just pointing out to him. Yeah. <laughs> just a piece of art um, that is socially aware, mm. it does have impact. Yeah. And I, I would say that it's, it's a bad thing if it's just a piece of art with the uh, context of uh, being social. But I would say, if you're, is it social photography or <coughs> photography of the social? Mm -hmm. Good question. A great way to, to say it. But I, I would say, if you're truly a social photographer, <coughs> social artist, the impact of what it achieves is something that is paramount for me. Yeah, I understand. I, I also have like a, a difficult relationship with impact because uh, impact is, is something that is very difficult to measure. So how do you, if you have, um, if we make exhibitions at Photodoc, then maybe a hundred people will come and visit. But those hundred people are very much um, moved by what they've seen. And another exhibition might attract uh, more than uh, 3,000 people, uh, but those people just walked in and out five minutes and they might not have, but it's really difficult to measure what the impact is. Also, the, is it about the impact for the audience or is it also within social photography about the impact for the subject? So the one you are photographing, what is the impact of you as a photographer photographing him or her within a certain um, uh, setting, context. Uh, so impact has a lot of interesting questions related to it, I think. Um, an important word, but also a difficult one for me. Yeah, yeah. Someone else? No? Okay. I think your minds are already... Uh, Running, so uh, let's just start with me doing uh, what I came here for. So I thought I do need to tell a little bit about history for me to get a little bit of an idea of what social photography was uh, in, in, in my belief. So um, I just picked out a few iconic images. Um, that were ver very much about the social change that photography um, could embrace. So photography was used to, um, to, to make visual what was not seen yet. So we have Lewis Hine, Elliot Erwitt, Robert Frank. I'm just like passing by as if it's nothing, but uh, very important work. I don't... Did I move too fast? I think the beamer is out. Should I do something? No. <laughs> 
keep talking, it's fine, I'll just... <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what I think is interesting with these iconic images is that there was one image and that image stuck, uh, is stuck in our, in our minds and that is what we remember. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are so many images uh, that from everything that has happened, there are thousands and thousands of images. So I think that is um, a total change on how we uh, relate to these social issues in society and the way photography is an important medium to, to do so. Um, so that is a, a very big change. Um, and I, <coughs> I do need some slides to, <laughs> to back up my story. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just wait till it's, till it's on again. Should it snow? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, Robert Frank is coming back to us. Um, so then we have Diane Arbus, Eddie Adams, Jeff Widener, Kevin Carter. Uh, ah, but here it changes. So, uh, 80s, 90s, then we have a lot of photographers and artists who are also um, uh, noticing that there is an overload on images that we see in the news and that people are not really relating anymore to these subjects. So they're missing their purpose. Uh, they should awake people and they're not anymore. Uh, at least not enough. So then you have artists like uh, Alfredo Jaar, uh, who made this beautiful project um, that is called the Rwanda Project. Uh, it's, for me, it was a, a, um, a, one of the mind-blowing, uh, most of the mind-blowing projects I've ever seen. Uh, it's, it, these are photographs made in Rwanda during the war, and he decided not to show these images, but to put them in black boxes and put on the boxes what was on the images, what was on the pictures. So he was making a statement that we had already seen so much horrible images um, that we needed to change the way we were using photography. Um, and in his tradition, uh, the image Richard Drew made of the 9-11 uh, uh, attacks. And then you have Wally Draad, who in 2007 made this work, which is called Cotton Under My Feet. Um, and he was very, he was trying to remember what the, what the sky looked like. Uh, during 9-11. So he took uh, several photographs of the attacks but erased all the architecture and all the other images that were, like all the other information that was on the image except for the, the blue sky. And uh, for me this was a total new way of looking at this uh, happening and uh, a, total way of, a totally new way of, of looking at this uh, very important event also worldwide. Uh, this was part of an exhibition I saw in Arles in uh, 2016. Uh, that was an, an exhibition with, with a lot of uh, projects by artists who made work that were completely different from the normal iconic images we see on the news every day. Um, of course, Alan Cody already talked about it a little bit before and the work of IYY he made after it. Okay, that was a, like a rush through history, um, not doing everyone justice, uh, but um, uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how I think social photography is related to what was going on in the world of photography before we were all doing the photography and working with photography. Um, Last year, I made an exhibition which was called Beyond Us and Them at Photodoc. It was about um, your identity as an individual relate, related to your identity as being part of a group, uh, being part of a collective. Um, I'm going to show you a few projects that were in this exhibition, just to give you an idea. This is a project made by Amak Mamoudian. Uh, she's an Iranian photographer. She made the project Shinas Name, which, is co uh, which, which means a passport in uh, Iranian. Iranian, yes. Yeah. Um, beautiful project in which she collected uh, passport photos from uh, relatives uh, that were um, 
Lucet, that were like cancelled, that were like rejected. rejected. Thank you. Um, so this gives you an idea of what the identity of women is or should be in Iran. Uh, because these passports are very uniform always, but in Iran even more, because you have a lot of um, extra uh, criteria that you should wear your scarf in a, in a certain way and use no makeup. And um, because she, be, this is what you see here is, is not something she did. This is something um, that she found the pictures to be in a trash can in the government's. Um, like trash can where they used to make these photos. So um, she is collecting it and showing this. And I think she's very, um, uh, her work is very, um, it, she's an activist. And she can also not go back to Iran anymore because her project, as, as this one, is too offensive for them. So um, definitely a social photographer for me. Uh, because she puts aside her own um, well-being to make these uh, to make this work. This is a project made by Roos van Geffen. It's called uh, Zwarte School. It's uh, translated. It's called Black School. Um, because in the Netherlands we have oh, the image is a little bit, but yeah, <coughs> you, you know what 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 you're looking at. So. Um, in the Netherlands, we have um, a terminology that is called uh, a black school. If um, there is a school with children that has more than an X percentage of uh, children who are not from a Dutch background. Um, and this terminology, black school, is uh, very <coughs> questionable, to say the least. And uh, that is also what she's trying to do. So she photographed a black school, these children on, in this black school. Um, she photographed their faces and the back of their heads and then sorted them on color. And that is what you see here. So you can stand inside the circle and look at their faces or go around it and look at the back of their faces. Uh, this project is uh, very, um, very much questioning the way we are using these terminologies in society in very many different ways and in very many different uh, places. Um, and this is often so much internalized that it's something we are not really questioning anymore. But also not really because uh, you probably have heard of Zwarte Piet in the Netherlands, Black Piet. Uh, it's very much into discussion, but I rec also recently read a report in which s more than 70% of Dutch people are still wanting Black Piet to be part of Dutch tradition. So we're we're not there uh, yeah, yeah, we're not there yet, but uh, working on it. This is another proje project from Rose. It's called Goma. It's difficult to see now, but she photographed all the visitors of the photodoc exhibition. She photographed their throats, and then they were uh, all the visitors got a print, and they could sort themselves on color in the exhibition. Um, also to raise questions about how. How is it to actually be aware of the color you have? Because we are also aware as an institution as Photodoc is that we have a very white audience. Um, so her project was to raise a lot of questions and it did. So um, more about that in the Q&A, <laughs> I think. Uh, this is a project uh, by Heather Dewey Hackborg called Stranger Visions. She collected DNA from the street and turned this DNA into masks. And the DNA was from chewing gum or from cigarette buns. Um, and she turned this DNA with, with official police um, techniques into these uh, real life masks. So in, in theory, um, there could be people going to this exhibition and see themselves hanging on the wall. Um, she also made another project connected to exactly this thing. It's an essay. Um, and this forensic DNA phenotyping, that's what it's called, this system. Uh, she is, uh, and this essay is called Sci-Fi Crime Drama with a Strong Black Lead. 
If someone's interested in any of this, I can send you the information. Um, her project is, uh, is about the racial uh, systems that also slide into our police systems, in, our, uh, in all the things that we use in society. And she is raising a, a red flag because no one is raising questions. Everyone is, is very excited because it's, it's keeping us safe. It's very much about safety, uh, but uh, we are not questioning uh, the aspect of the racial um, problems that this has and what it has to do with our history in uh, racism and colonialism. Uh, this is a, a quote of hers. The act of creating computational, computational averages and looking for correlated features in large database, data sets has an air of authenticity and scientific validity. But what this actually does is create a system of types, you might call them stereotypes. <coughs> um, this is a very interesting essay, so read it if you want to. It's online. This is a project made by Sanne van den Elze. It's called Hommage. Uh, she made a video installation um, in which she sat in front um, several of her family members, so her boyfriend, her mother, her father, for 15 minutes and she didn't talk to any one of them and they also did not talk to her. And what she filmed was the way they verbally uh, communicated, ver non-verbally non -verbally communicated with each other. Um, so you can see the relationship and you actually see, because you see uh, seven sonnas above and her relatives um, below, uh, and what you see is not the same sonna seven times, but you see seven different identities because she has seven different relationships with all these people. Um, I think this is the last one. This is um, a project uh, called The Machine to Be Another, uh, made by another Be Another Lab. And they make uh, VR installations combined with, um, um, how do you say this? Um, like, hmm, I forgot the word, like a theater. So let's, let ex let's explain a little bit. You get a VR um, a movie, uh, in which you are being put in the body of someone else. So it's a body swap, a digital body swap. But at the same time, what this uh, human is, is doing in, in the movie is what you are actually feeling at the same time. So if someone is touching you in the movie, you're also being touched at the same time in this VR installation. And what they are trying to do is to create empathy. So they are trying to... Oh... This is time management. Um, <laughs> so what they're trying to do is to increase um, empathy, uh, which I think is very interesting with new digital media. This is how it looks like, or might look like. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. No, I'm going to tell you very quickly, uh, but I'm not going to show it. So within this exhibition, I also uh, collected a lot of commercials that are uh, seen on TV uh, by, well, commercial brands, companies, who are using social, uh, this social hype that is going on at this moment to sell their stuff. And uh, that is, I think that's very problematic because we all like these movies because they're very touching and moving and, and um, we're very much... Um, relating to what we see, but on the other hand, these companies are just selling uh, their products. And therefore, uh, just be aware, next time you see a commercial, think about, is this one of those social uh, engaged uh, commercials? And do not like on Facebook, please. Um, because they're not honest. You can like, but it's just be uh, aware of them trying to sell the product, and it has nothing to do with creating a better society. Okay, then we're going to do this in 10 minutes. Uh, so what I find interesting is that we, uh, within social um, uh, sociology, we're talking often about the 99%. 
the 99% of people who are not earning as much as the only 1% is doing at the same time. Uh, but what I am also uh, interested in is the 99% of photographs, because uh, you could say that 1% of photographs is art, that is hopefully what we make or consider ourselves to make, but there is also another 99% of photographs who is not considered to be art, but is not uh, therefore uh, useless, because it also, th this 99% says a lot about who we are as, as people. Uh, it's like... Um, it's like a database of sociology research, and I think it's our duty as modern day photographers to use this data and to uh, create a reflection on what this data actually means for uh, what this says about who we are today as human beings uh, and as society. So this 99% is very important. Um, I'll give you a few examples to just give you visually an idea of what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, okay. So this is the tweet bundle made by Jan Dirk van den Burg, a lot of Dutch languages today. Uh, <laughs> what he did is he grabbed randomly a few names from Twitter and he published the Twitter accounts from these people. So these are people who are not they did not make this Twitter account to be um, in a book or to be well known, but now suddenly they are because Jan Dirk van der Burg uh, believed it was important for them to tell their stories and also confront them with what we are sharing with the rest of the world. Then a project uh, called Showroom Girls by Willem Populier. It's uh, already like a few years old, I think. Uh, but he used the photographs that were on the computer of uh, computers of um, like these um, stores. Store Apple store. Apple store. Ah, okay, yeah. And um, there are a lot of people. Well, these two girls actually made a lot of pictures of themselves uh, in this <laughs> store. So he collected all these images made sure that they were not recognized and also added uh, in this exhibition um, the, the, the live stream of their tweets, I think, or their digital communication that they had. So you could see these girls in the background and you could also see live these, the, the um, digital communication that they had with each other. Then, oh, I really wanted to show this one, but I'm not going to. You should all go and see it. It's a project behind the blue screen uh, made by uh, Ruben Pater and Jan Jaap and Jaap van Heusden. Um, they made a project uh, that is actually an app. So this app is uh, used in countries where people cannot speak out for themselves um, and are very restricted to government policies. Um, and normally you would see a, someone uh, with the face totally black or in the shadow or with no facial expression at all. And their project, um, their app is made to, is designed to give people a face, to give people an expression, to give people a little bit of humanity, uh, yeah, humanity back uh, when they are telling their stories. So it's, um, it's actually it's safety on the one hand, but it's also a reflection on society on the other hand. Um, <coughs> go and see these movies because it's very important that these stories get told. What's my time, Klaus? Four minutes? Okay, I can do four minutes. I can do four minutes. If you wanted to ask questions. Yeah, true, true. Um, okay. Yeah, give and take the new photographer. So um, within uh, sociology, you have three main aspects uh, that every sociologist is connected to. And I think for uh, photographers, uh, social photographers, the same thing goes. So we have inequality, identity, and social cohesion. And think about if you just um, uh, said you were a social photographer in the beginning, in which one of these three, or maybe a combination of these, uh, would you put yourself into? Um, I have 
uh, made a small selection of a few artists you might know or might not know uh, who fit into these boxes. JR, I thought it was kind of bold for myself to like put JR in my like uh, presentation in Paris, uh, but um, his his work is the work uh, in which he always tries to uh, say something about inequality. Um, and this work is a specific um, is specifically about social cohesion, about bringing people together, about um, yeah, about bringing people together. So. Same here in the Mexican-American border. Um, so he is, um, JR is like um, using all three boxes, I think. But most, most of them are not specifically about identity, but I think more about social cohesion and about um, inequality. Then we have Julian Germain with the project In the Eye of the Street, in which he gave the camera to uh, uh, like children that live on the street. Um, he collected the photographs they made and he made a book out of it. And uh, he also, like a book, a newspaper, I had to say. So this newspaper went, uh, when was spread in the, in the city. So also people could, could see the people who are normally not seen in the city. Uh, and he also made an <coughs> exhibition, but not in a white cube but out on the street. Um, so also in reaching a broader audience, he is, within this project, doing a lot to, uh, to raise awareness. Okay, last project. Uh, yes, this is a project um, made by Jan Hoek. Well, it's not this. This is why Jan Hoek uh, started his project. He uh, looked at uh, the Maasai, and when he googled Maasai, this is what he saw. And he was thinking with himself, is this really how the Maasai see themselves? Is this how they want to look? Um, is this how they want to represent themselves? Or is this how we as Western people want to look at them? So he went to uh, visit Maasai and uh, made photographs with them, not uh, uh, photographs of them, with them. Um, and ask them how do you wanna, how do you want us to see you? How do you want to represent yourself? And they made three uh, pictures, and then they had a discussion: which one they liked more, uh, which one they preferred, uh, or if they maybe did not prefer any. Um, and this conversation, this interaction, the questions uh, Jan Hoek raises with this project is, I believe, very much about social photography. This is another project uh, in which he um, um, put an ad in the paper, and in this paper he asked, uh, he needed models, and anyone could reply. If you're, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, how young you are, how big you are, or little you are, if you want to be a model, send me an image, or send me um, um, your information. So. Uh, he photographed a lot of people with a lot of different um, ways of which they would, how do you say this? Um, represented? Yeah, they had different ways of, um, why the, different intentions of why they wanted to be a model. Um, and the discussion he has, or the, the conversation he has with this subject is always... Um, Public. It's always part of the of the work, as you can see here in one of his installations. And his work is always about identity. So it's always about who are you and how do you re represent yourself and are you seen by others the way you want to be seen or do you want to change something about this? But um, and I want to. I think this is the last <coughs> one. Um, there is also a lot of discussion going on around his work, as often is. Uh, when uh, a social photographer is making work, it often is, is discussion. And I think the discussion uh, that is going on at, um, surrounding Jan Hoek's work is very interesting because he is a white uh, male Western photographer going to Africa and uh, photographing there. But at the same time also questioning how he does this. And also knowing that 
within this position, he is always doing something wrong. Uh, because he is a Western white male photographer and going to Africa, that is where it already goes wrong. Um, and he knows that and he is trying, to, he's trying. And I think the, the way he is trying and also uh, communicating this in essays and uh, online with an open mind uh, is very admirable to me. Um, so if you want to know more about his work, I think this is also part of his work. Normally people show only his photographs, but I think the entire um, discussion surrounded his work is also part of the work itself. Um, I think... Oh, and I also had a lot of questions for you. So this is what I want to close up with. Um, who are you? What do the projects you make tell you about you? What makes you get out of bed every day? What is your responsibility? Why do you make the project you make? Who is your audience? And is this audience based on people who, who want to see it or based on people who need to see it? What is your relationship with your subject? Is the relationship based on equality? And what is in it for them? That is what I want to close up with because there are, this, this presentation only raised <laughs> even more questions. Uh, but I think these questions are important to discuss and talk about because there is often not a final answer and the only thing is that we can learn from each other um, so hopefully these questions will also sometimes pop into your mind when you're making another project and trying to do the right thing within photography uh, thank you Yes. So there are a few of us here who are fashion, film, and photography students, and something we hear all the time is that our work is not important because it doesn't have a social impact, or that it's what we're doing doesn't carry like the kind of weight that these kinds of projects do because we're not mm. maybe addressing something as directly as these projects are. Um, my question for you is, have you seen photographers who are maybe considering social impact in less obvious ways or even like using it in the realm of fashion? Yes, I think uh, Viviana Sosse is uh, one yeah. of the photographers that is very much on the... And I think what is most important when you're in this position is to, cons to think about who for who is your work? Because there are a lot of people maybe raising these questions, but they are probably then not the audience you're making it for. Mm -hmm. So make sure that the audience you do make the work for, for and not who the people who like it, who want to see it, but the people who need to see it, that is a huge difference. Um, make sure that, that it's important for them, with or without the social impact. I think that's the core of the, yeah. Yes? I have a question about um, <coughs> Julian Germain's work Yes. Um, in the Eye of the Street, and I just wanted to hear your opinion, um, because I've heard about projects in the past where um, art, various artists, photographers are um, either giving cameras to people on the street or homeless people, um, and I just wanted to know if you find that at all problematic, um, and whether or not, I don't know the details of this project, whether or not he was paying them or um, giving them some sort of like, an image that they took afterward or whether or not how much he was profiting from this. And mm -hmm. although intention is important, I just wanted to see your opinion on yeah. works that are similar. Yeah, I do know a, a, a few details about the work, not all details. I do know that he was not uh, getting anything out of it money-wise. He, uh, all the money he made was put into the project within the newspaper and within the, the, the project he made on the, the exhibition he made on the street. Um, I do, I'm not sure, but I do believe that the, uh, the children got photographs themselves. But what for me is, is there is a lot to say about this, I think. But uh, what for me is very important is that you um, empower people. And you can empower people by giving them money um, but sometimes you can also empower people like JR did and giving these women, he photographed the books so they can also tell their stories. And um, I think empowerment in, in whatever way is, is necessary within these projects. And the way you do it can vary from project to project. 
Does that give you? Yeah. It's a, I could like we can talk two hours yeah. <laughs> about this, but uh, I think empowerment for me is the most important thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes, because I uh, like the uh, the projects I made were okay, and I could also graduate with these projects, and then I would be a photographer, and then what? For me, the combination of working with photography as the medium that for me is very important to tell to tell stories in whatever way, in combination with the social aspect and and to well empowerment <laughs> to empower people. Uh, that was for me very important because I was also always thinking about what is the use of what I do. And sometimes within the arts, use is, is, is a bad word. But for me, it's essential to, do, to get up uh, every morning because I want to know what I'm doing it for. And um, yeah, giving people a stage, giving, working together, sharing my expertise, um, raising questions for me was more important than photographing myself, also because I thought I, I, I think there are better photographers than me and uh, I think I'm better at doing something else. But it was not easy to, to make this decision. Was, yeah. <coughs> yes? Do you think what we call social media has any... Um, is, is completely different to what you're calling social photography. I mean, is there a different kind of label there going on? Well, I think the, the social media aspect is the 99% I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So for me, this social media, uh, the photography that is on social media is very important and tells us a lot about society. <coughs> and I think we as modern photographers should, should use this more than we're doing now. Um, but... Um, yeah, so for me, it's, it, it is important and it's about the 99% of uh, photographs that is not valued enough because it does say a lot about the way we're now connecting or not connecting to each other and the way we're representing ourselves um, and also the way our identity as individuals and also as collectives is formed uh, because we can see what everyone else is doing every day. So... Uh, in, I, that, in, in that case, it's, it's essentially what you're looking at sits within that kind of one percent, you know, because the work that you're looking at clearly is based in sort of cultural institutions and galleries yeah. and so on. I mean, I'm, um, I'm just wondering if, if in doing that, there's a sort of marginalisation of this idea of social photography and social media. Mm -hmm. Um, and what is your what what do you specifically well, I mean? If, if, I mean, if, if social media as a term was meant to be something different from what it's actually become, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And therefore, whether you're kind of distancing yourself when you talk about social photography from ideas of what social media. Is. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah. Can okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand, and I think it's an important one because. Uh, I think in the art world, it are they, these things are two different worlds, and they should not be. Um, but it's also because it's uh, relatively new. We're try still trying to relate to as artists to what this actually is. Well, what it's interesting, isn't it, how it's kind of inverted on itself, and actually, a lot of social media is quite bad for society now. Mm -hmm. It's it's not. Yeah, it's not helping us. I mean, maybe we yeah. need to go through that process and something good will eventually come back out. No, but that's, but that's also why we need artists to point out why, what this is actually doing to us. Yeah. So there's also this, this uh, reflection part that uh, at Photodoc we call it uh, <coughs> visual literacy. So we have to um, learn people how to deal with photographs and how to... Uh, put photographs online, but also read them and, and, and also see, are they true or are they not true? What is real, what is not real? So we have to educate. And I think education is not just for the journalists, 
but education is also for the artists and to to let people know what how to deal with photography nowadays. I mean, there's a great ship, there's a great Dorothea Lang show on right now. You probably already know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a pom, and the, the, the work that she did, um, commissioned by the military, um, which she sort of exposed a bit too much, and her work was then um, was banned from being seen. When in actual fact, her view of what mm. you know, her, her own social values took over. From the assignment, yeah. she was exposing other sorts of, you know, needs for reform. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I think that, that is that interesting. To your idea of you know, who is the work for, who needs to see. Yeah. It. She was kind of making work that needed to be seen rather than yeah. who it was for. The same goes, I think, for the war porn project made by the photographer whose name I forgot. So maybe if someone knows uh, who made the project war porn, uh, it's the same thing. He yeah. photographed for newspapers. Um, and uh, there were a lot of photos that were not being used because they could not be used. Uh, no. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll come back to that maybe. Um, and um, uh, he collected all the images that were not published and made a book out of it. And I think those those types of um, um, reflections. Uh, do really create awareness about the position that we have as um, photographers nowadays to raise awareness on these issues and also reflect on the medium itself and the, cha the rapidly changing medium. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Um, so I have a question on perspective related to representation mm -hmm. and how, because photography is a form of art, if it's someone's perspective, and the representation may not be truthful, and uh, if it devalues their perspective, even if the representation can be harmful to other people, mm -hmm. or, yeah. I'm trying to like word it correctly, but. <laughs> and what, what, what is it that you? Like your opinion, if we should, if it devalues their perspective, because art is all about perspective, and mm -hmm other people's reality, even though the representation is incorrect or mm. harmful to... Yeah, I think it all, it all has to do with transparency. So within, oh, when you're going to a university, then you do uh, a research, and then your research is, um, has to be, uh, rep how do you say that, like, replicable? Like you, can, you have to do the research again, and otherwise it's... it's, it's it's useless. And I think the same goes for photography. You have to, for me, at least try to be as transparent as possible and tell what you have done as a photographer, communicate about that within the work or in the context of the work. And with that, you, with that giving the transparency, uh, then people can make up their mind themselves. But I think with sometimes it's... Um, it's, it's so easy to say, well, it's just art, so we can do whatever. But sometimes it would also be good to be transparent and to show what, you have, what you've done and also what you have not done. And the, either, either way it's fine, but be open about it. Yeah. Does that give you a bit of an answer? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> yes? Maybe one more question and then we can maybe move up. I have a question around, like, what kind of curriculum you have or how do you go about teaching visual literacy and is that something that you think the, um, could be implemented like at a younger age into students or something like yeah we're, uh, at photodoc we're already doing this with uh, young children so uh, we're also having a curriculum within schools and we are setting up different projects and programs in relationship with uh, like in collaboration with schools uh, from children that are very young to um, adolescents, um, and um, uh, I think it's it's very important to have a discussion about what photography is and to also uh, let people speak out on what they are actually looking at. What what does the photograph give you um, on information, and what does this tell you about you? And uh, is it is this in, is this information correct, or is it your own? subjective thoughts connected to um, to this photograph so that's what we're 
also working on now with Photodoc in collaboration with these schools and hopefully we will come up with a curriculum that will go even internationally. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool just because I'm thinking back to my education and I think it was sorely lacking. And yeah, and it's still lacking. And, uh, yeah. and everyone is making photographs, uh, yeah. but there is no education on how to use it and yeah. to critically uh, judge what you're seeing. Um, yeah. And I think that kind of relates back to the point I think maybe you made it about social media and um, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, I have one more question, sorry. <laughs> um, when you talked about uh, I forget the name, the, the Dutch photographer who took pictures in Kenya. Yes. Uh, Jan Hoek. Yeah. Yes. It was interesting how you mentioned that um, he felt even though he, I mean, he was clear about what his mandate was there and what he was doing, mm -hmm. he felt out of place and he felt that he was a colonial. He was, he was described as a colonial. Photographer. Yes, in in the essay he was, yeah. Even yeah. after being transparent about his yes about his intention. Mm -hmm. So that brings me to now. Um, it made me think of empathy. I think um, what lacks most of the time is not what color you are or what, what, what subject it is that you're photographing, but the empathy behind it. Because, I mean, we have many cases of photographers of different ethnicities shooting in many different countries, um, and they may to understand the subject, understand why they're there, and, and, uh, and uh, the whole zeitgeist. So basically, when, when they're taking that image, the subject and the photographer have such a cohesive relationship, it makes a great photo. Mm -hmm. But not only just a nice looking photo, but a photo that represents the events of that, of that time. That's why you know you talked about Dorothy and Lang, the Farm Security Association. I think those kind of images will now reveal you know the real important stories. Mm. And I think photography will always have that mandate in my perspective. Thank you. I think this is the best closure uh, of the evening we can have. Thank you.